In this video, we'll discuss the hormonal control of the male reproductive system. So before we look at the male reproductive system specifically, let's just remember how the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary work together to control hormone release in the endocrine system. So recall that the hypothalamus creates and releases what are called releasing hormones and these releasing hormones travel to the anterior pituitary where they cause the release of tropic hormones. And those tropic hormones then travel to other endocrine organs within the body to cause an effect. So if we look specifically at the male reproductive hormones, the hypothalamus is going to secrete a hormone called gonadotropin releasing hormone or GnRH. And this starts to happen at puberty. GnRH goes to the anterior pituitary where it causes the production and the secretion of two hormones, follicle stimulating hormone or FSH and luteinizing hormone or LH. And FSH and LH are then going to travel in the blood to the testes where they will then have their effect. So what is that effect that they have when they get there? So when they get there, they're going to act upon the different types of cells within the testes. FSH is going to act on the Sertoli cells, which are the supportive cells within the seminiferous tubules that are essential for sperm production. So FSH is going to act on those and stimulate sperm production. LH is going to stimulate the interstitial or the Leydig cells to start secreting testosterone and testosterone is another hormone. So it's now going to have some effects. So what is testosterone going to do? Well, one thing it's going to do is it's going to act on those Sertoli cells also to stimulate the production of sperm cells. Testosterone is also key in promoting the development of the secondary male sex characteristics. So for example, development of facial and body hair, growth of the larynx, which causes lowering of the voice, strengthening of muscles, and an increased secretion of body oils, which causes acne. Testosterone is also associated with an increase in sex drive. So if we review what we've talked about so far, we have the hypothalamus and it's going to release GnRH, which is going to act on the anterior pituitary in a positive manner to cause the anterior pituitary to release FSH and LH. FSH is going to have a positive effect on Sertoli cells and cause an increase in sperm production. LH will act on the Leydig cells in a positive manner and cause them to produce testosterone. Testosterone is also going to have a positive effect on the Sertoli cells and further increase sperm production. So these are all the positive effects that are happening, but as we've been learning in this unit, we can't just let these things go unchecked. We want to have the right amount of testosterone and an appropriate amount of sperm production. So that needs to occur through a negative feedback mechanism. So in this case, what happens is when testosterone reaches a high enough level, it's going to act in a negative fashion on the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary. So testosterone in the blood will act on those two regions to cause a decrease in their hormone production. So it will decrease the hypothalamus production of GnRH and the anterior pituitary production of FSH and LH, which will then bring the testosterone levels back down. The other thing that happens is that FSH not only um, causes the Sertoli cells to create more sperm, but it also causes them to produce a hormone called inhibin. And inhibin's job, uh, as the name suggests, it inhibits the anterior pituitary. So it acts in a negative fashion on the anterior pituitary to slow the release of FSH. And that little loop 
keeps the sperm production in under control and at appropriate levels. So this final diagram shows all the interactions that are occurring in the male reproductive system in terms of hormones to keep testosterone levels and sperm production at the appropriate level.